green color was weird. Welcome to Psychic Holistic Spotlight. My name is Bill Hannon, and I'm teaming up with Josie Way today as we interview Doug Vogel, who works with Neuro Linguistic Patterning, it's a, a short term is NLP, and hypnosis and the way he's able to weave uh, these two modalities uh, together. So, What's Doug. Up? Here I am again. What's going on, man? It's only been 30 again, years. It's been 30 years since we've seen each other. <laughs> right, that's right. Nice to see you. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. So, so it sounds very interesting. Um, you've gone your way, I've gone my way, yeah. and we were just sitting here talking, and we're talking about the same stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and so, as it was 30 years ago, I'm interested in how to connect to our original self, our true self. Mm -hmm. And it's usually by way of the traumas, the thing that blocked our original energy. Mm -hmm. So my work, where it was more focused intellectually with neurolinguistics, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, it has moved kind of further down into the body with emotional release work. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that over the years, the, the landscape, my landscape, was so cluttered with unexpressed, unfelt patterns of emotion, okay. and I didn't really know that. I was having a very, very successful, very deep meditation practice oh. where for about six months or a year, I was able to transcend a conscious reality and then go into this non-state, this unified field state and wow. stay there for hours. And then all of a sudden after six months or a year, something drastically changed and something was coming up for me, kind of a life-changing thing. Okay. And it had to do with exactly what I'm talking about, this area of the body that isn't connected, that needs to be connected with spirit, needs to be connected with intellect, and that is the, the will, the will oh, of the body, which is, right. which is really just feelings. Right. So you're saying will is just feelings? I yes. always thought it was a more of a focused instead of a feeling well or just those two different aspects of it well two different aspects okay. of it um in my understanding which i'm sure there are many i look as at will as the uh ultimately the feelings mm -hmm. so it's kind of the opposite of where somebody says you know where's your willpower mm -hmm. so in in this world that i am in, inhabiting willpower is not something where you want to keep a strong willpower you want to be able to break through this right. this false sense of strength this identity right. that is holding these patterns in place and allow something else to yeah, it's holding you keeping you stuck yes it's yeah. keeping us stuck right very interesting. So um, you talking about exploring, you mentioned uh, that, that there are some questions that you ask yourself. Um, right. What's the best way to uh, work those into? Right. And so what I would say to you, Bill, is that there are three questions that can help instantly to assist with somebody who's holding on to something. And those three questions are number one, if a person is dealing with something they can't let go of, question number one, could you let it go? Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Yeah. Could you let it go? And some people would say no, or some people say I don't know. Right. And sometimes it's just posing the question to the person's consciousness. Gotcha. And the second one is, well, would you let it go? Not could you, but would you let it go? Mm -hmm. And then just let the person be with that. Mm -hmm. And with that intent to look in this area of their consciousness, they'll have a response. Mm -hmm. And so I'm interested in whatever the response is, whether it's resistance or it is, yes, they 
can begin to think about the answer to would you let it go? Mm -hmm. And then the third one is when. Mm -hmm. When could you or would you let this go? Mm -hmm. And those are three really valuable questions. So I say that because I recommend to people when you're up against something and you don't know how to get through it, just pause for a second and ask yourself those, those questions and just mm. wait for the answer. And then if that which is blocking you comes back again, just pose the questions again. It does open up an area uh, that can be in the unconscious that can begin to right. provide uh, some, some relief in a certain so way. So could you? Would, would you, you and or, when and when 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 can I when will I yeah. right yeah I I've done something of that nature uh, at back when I wanted to quit smoking uh, I took a medication the Shantix mm -hmm. that they were giving out and every morning I got up and said is this the last day I'm going to have a cigarette? Right. And it became after two weeks, it went from no to yes. Today is your last day. There it is. It just by asking myself that question. Mm, wonderful. It, it, I didn't put it in could you or would you, but I knew I had to say yes eventually. Yes. Yes. Because so, I knew it was in my best interest. Sure. And so what you're doing is you're, you're setting your intention. Mm -hmm. And that is, is key to any kind of change, your right. intention to heal. And when you know you have to, you have to begin to change something in your life. And sometimes that, that thought can begin to move, make movement in your emotional body, in your thought patterns, and that's that's really what we're looking for. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, so I've learned to do that a little more often when it, I, when it's a change I have to make. Excellent, Josie. That's, it, that's a good uh, idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And along the same idea, uh, Bill was just asking me about the questions that I asked. The other one, which has really been helpful, and I invite the viewers to to think about this. And that is the very simple question of what needs to be healed? And when the consciousness hasn't been addressed that clearly, when you haven't really given that clear focus, what needs to be healed? Perhaps you've never posed that question, so it begins that same kind of process. And then stating out loud, and this is good to do it out loud, my intention is to heal this. And then you sink into that physical realm to allow that to take over in the body as it will. My intention is to heal this. And then the third one, which I'm so excited about, is I don't know how. This is, this is the place where we become alive. Mm -hmm. This is the place where we make changes. This is the place where miracles can happen, which is I don't know how. Mm -hmm. And if anything I've learned in this life is that to put yourself in a place of not knowing and of uncertainty and to open up to that uncertainty, that's where miracles can happen. Mm -hmm. So I want to heal this. My intention is to heal this. And I mean, you have to mean it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have to be ready. And right. if you're not, then just enjoy the moment of resisting it. That's fine, too. Yeah. And then lastly, I don't know how. Show me. Okay. Show me how. Who's going to show you? Well, that's up for debate. <laughs> that's, what, that's actually where my next line of question was yeah. going to go was, are you working with somebody on the other side? Is somebody working through you? Or are they just giving you directions and you're doing that's, the actual that's a, work? That's a beautiful question. Well, I, I could feel a shift in my body when you said that. So I think that when one becomes open to, uh, I would say, the emotional body and moving through the blocks, I would say that that communication opens up what is considered the spiritual realm, and then communication can open. I don't know mm -hmm. who is 
you know, who's the giver and who's the receiver. It feels like it's mutual mm -hmm. when I'm in that when right. I'm in that state. Right. But I do know one thing: is that that which we know, the concepts which we keep, and the beliefs which we have, which are all entrained, and this has to do with hypnosis. You know, all the things we constantly do in repetition that keeps us kind of in this conscious state. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Well, when it doesn't it's opening up to this unknown realm. And how do we do that? You know, how do we enter an altered state? And my contention is that one, and however we define an altered state, a state, oops, <laughs> a state, you wanna put that in for me? Sure. A state which we, here we go, thank you, Bill. You're all set. A state which we normally, Oh, hi. There we go. Like that? Okay. A state, an altered state is a state which we normally aren't in where different things can happen. So when we're stuck, it's because our same thoughts, our same feelings, our same physiology, they're all, they're all basically entraining us into a certain state, a right, certain behavior. Right, right. So how do we get into this miracle state? How, how do we stumble into this state of awareness or openness where really change can only happen when we're in that state? Mm -hmm. How do we stumble into that spot? Yeah, well, if you're asking me, I, I really don't know. I, I, I have been, I've been very lucky as far as being able to tap into information at times, but it's just something that comes to me when that happens. It's not like, um, I like the fact that, you know, you're taking this time to set up a pattern, a, a conscious road to follow to um, work into accomplishing something by communicating and um, being able to pull it together and something, you know, result from that. Yes. Yes, and that works fine. And when you're getting the results you need, I keep saying you, you know, I, yeah, whomever. Yeah, right. when, when one is getting the results they want or need, then that is the perfect logical road to success. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, it all that all has to break apart. And at some point, that that map has to be given up in order for something brand new to take place. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's about surrendering, it's about giving up, and it's about not knowing. Right. And one of the ways that I've been able to create this kind of pattern is to allow myself to feel the resistance, to feel the blocks, to feel whatever it is that is blocking my life and really bring it alive. And the key point in this is willingness, openness and allowing. So really what I'm talking about is how to move through these old traumas in our lives. And in the past, I would utilize you know, neurolinguistics, which is a great set of psychotherapeutic tools to ask great questions. It really works fine. But I found that it has its own limitations. So one of the other ways, which as I said, when I came out of that deep year long meditation, my body was telling me something isn't resolved. It was about allowing, accepting and receiving and giving myself permission to no longer resist the most difficult feelings I was having, to intentionally bring them up and feel them, no matter how hard or difficult or painful they were. And I had to do it because mm -hmm. I knew there was a deep fear right, around it. Right, right, right. And I didn't know how to do it, right. but I knew it had to be done. Okay. And uh, anybody who does it, it the thing, you're going to find out is that when you, and this is part of the parts work I do, when you get to know this part that could be a protector, protecting yourself from some idea that you're going to be harmed, mm -hmm. um, it could be what I call an exiled part, which for me it was just being completely unconscious that I had this whole other world to open up to, so that was exiled, it was totally out of my consciousness. Right. 
And by doing this, um, this deep emotional release work, uh, I allowed myself to feel whatever it was and not resist it. And the miracle is that once one does it and becomes friends with a part that's been contacting us for years, please talk to me, I want to share something with you. Right. This isn't resolved. It doesn't matter if it started at six years old or at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. It's this landscape that we keep inhabiting that really isn't us. Mm -hmm. It's really not us. And the miracle is, once you allow it, it transforms into something it morphs else. It into something else, yeah. It's not what you think it is. It's not a monster. Mm -hmm. This anger, this rage, this hostility, you know what's underneath it? Something very loving, something very kind, and something very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's the miracle, is that you find out that this part really has been helping you along and it wants to just share something. Mm -hmm. And then you go into that state of, of joy or love, which is really behind everything. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like uh, quite a process that would be very rewarding. Yes, yeah, it, it is rewarding. Well, especially, you know, we, we tend to live, and we've met people who are spiritual, we met people who utilize spiritual practices to help themselves and mm -hmm. help other people. Mm -hmm. I am one of those people, and, and yet I was just utilizing such a limited part of my, my being. Mm -hmm. uh, the intellect is a fine place, but I, I was living there, and I had to allow these other experiences. I think a lot of people can identify with that. They stop and think about it. Some people don't even go to live into the intellect. They go into denial, and they Perfect. go into fantasy. Perfect. You know, unreal places. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and... Uh, that's, that's beautiful, Josie. Fantasize their lives. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. And, and, I think, and I think that works for a while. And I think resistance and denial is, is huge. And we all do it. And there's a time and a place to allow you know, the resistance and the denial just to come forward. Yeah. And what's nice about it's it. It's that or shock. <laughs> that or shock. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And, and either one will work. You know, shock will snap you out of things. And then accepting the resistance. Like, it's one thing to be shocked and to change. That's beautiful, if that's the way to go. Also, to totally bring on the resistance and be resistant. Totally inhabit. That's, yeah, you've mentioned that a helps. couple times yeah. so far. Yeah, be willing, be open to embrace and welcome the resistance and just be in it. That sounds to me like it's a big kind of a hard thing to work through. I mean, to pull in or try to understand. I mean, how do you even realize what your resistance is? Well, I can tell you one thing, that if a person started to verbalize areas that make them angry, what they're angry at, mm -hmm. that's a good inroad into the, into the emotional realm. Mm -hmm. And often I find the opposite of what I was trained to do is that by verbalizing the most negative thoughts, which often is a part, and I talk about parts, which is really just identities that we created over the years that have certain behaviors, certain beliefs, certain thoughts. And by contacting these I identities, mm -hmm. often they have a language. And so how do we identify them? We notice them and we allow the language to come forward. And especially if we're being bothered by something, an interaction with somebody and we have to be right or we were wronged by somebody, there's something right. desperately go going on that is out of our control. Mm -hmm. Let those words come up. That's usually a part of us, an identity, that, that's trying to tell you something. Mm that we've been in, in resistance. That's to. right. Yeah. So that's part of identifying what the actual resistance may be. Yes, and... For me, when things start moving slower, I know, I know now, I know myself well enough to know, ah, there's some denial and resistance going on here. Beautiful. I know it. Yes. And, I, and, and I've learned not to be afraid of it because mm -hmm. it's good it, it is good everything is good uh, everything uh, is good 
-hmm. It's just, we resist it. it it's all for our better. Oh, it's beautiful. I agree. Yeah. If, if people would start to realize that all emotions are good, they're all helpful, there are no bad parts. They're mm -hmm. all good. Every emotion is good. Right. And, and the, the key is that once you, get, once you allow this part that is so frightening, the part that was in denial, the part that resisting, once, like you said, you acknowledge it, it moves. So really what it is in the past when perhaps you didn't acknowledge the denial or resistance, there was a stuck. And what we want to do is we want to add movement. Flush it out a little. <laughs> Flush it out, for God's sakes. Hmm. That's interesting. So one of the things that we were talking about yeah. before we even sat down, and I'm going to find it <clears throat> interesting as to how you're going to bring it into what, you've, what you're talking about now is the NLP and right. hypnosis. Yes. And so what, what's so perfect about what we're talking about is that what I realized about hypnosis is that it brings a person, myself, into an altered state. And really, altered states are where change can happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so... True. Right. True. Yeah. And so when we're in a relaxed or playful or calm state, uh, when we're entranced by even something as simple as driving on the road or a conversation like this or falling in love, the, the mind starts opening up to other, other things, mm -hmm. to, to new ways of thinking. And so when we're in that relaxed state, as I said, neurolinguistics is just the best set of, of questions and tools, psychotherapeutic tools, to elicit change in a person. Um, and so uh, they work together quite, quite well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can see you know the shifting of the where your mind's at the frequency. Good word. Um, that allows something to shift. Yes, yes, and it is all about frequencies. Mm -hmm. you know, it really is. Mm -hmm. We were talking a little bit about the uh, Rife machine mm -hmm. and that uh, frequency technology which you and I utilize. It's mm -hmm. very interesting. Uh, this device was made by Raymond uh, Royal Rife. Royal Rife, exactly. He was an inventor, and uh, this technology has been around for years. He invented the first electron microscope, was, which was a huge apparatus on right. a table, and now they got these little machines that's exactly. you know, hooked up to computers, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Um, and so, really, I don't want to digress too much, yes. but, but this frequency, vibration, um, frequency and, and vibrations are really, I think, uh, th the key to a lot of this, this healing. Because we operate, human beings operate at like six hertz, which is really a sine wave each, each second. That's how much a sine wave can, mm -hmm. can turn over. Mm -hmm. And so uh, by utilizing frequencies, solfeggio frequencies we were talking about, right. or with the Rife machine, you actually can have a con contacts where there are these electromagnetic frequencies that resonate through the body that can produce calmness or right. peace or work through spiritual issues and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so through hypnosis, neurolinguistics, through the kind of emotional release work, we really are working with vibrations, we're working with frequencies, and we're changing them. And in many cases, it's possible to heal through a vibration. Sure. So as we're talking, we're talking about the state of mind, the state of being. Mm -hmm. um, do you find yourself in, in a healing moment being able to reach in and affect the healing? Reach into what? Reach into the person. Well, I believe like right now, I just went inside of my, my body and now I, I can, can see feel yeah. that I'm, I'm resonating kind of with you. Mm -hmm. And I think when a person trains themselves to enter in the body, to feel right. the vibrations from and the head I, all the way. I feel you. Yeah, to the toes. Yeah. 
um, I am now resonating with you. I can feel mm -hmm. us resonating, sitting side as energy. Reverberation. Yes, and so here's what I would say. I would say the answer is yes, that I can reach inside of myself. And what it is, it's, it's this conversational trance, conversational mm -hmm. healing, mm -hmm. conversational feeling, sure. where we're sharing these vibrations. And once you know how to have them, right. you can begin to share them and then be influenced by other people who you want to be influenced by vibrationally. Yes. Right? Yes, no, that feels great. I understand yeah, that feels exactly. Great. I, I understand. And you, and you look at the um, we being matter are really not matter. If you look at the atom, if the nucleus of an atom were the size of a ping pong ball, the electrons would be spinning around the outside of a stadium. Right. So there's so much space between all these atoms and that gives us the opportunity of being able to go within ourselves mm. and with permission to go into somebody else mm. and affect the healing because you're just working through space. Mm. Physically, right. it's just um, yeah. a, mindful, a mind state, you know? It's, yeah. Yeah, and it's a feeling world. It can be the intellectual world. And as listening to Josie and you, you know, it's about your intention. You know, you set the intention. <laughs> right. What is it you want to do? So every moment can be a communication of feeling. Every moment can be a deeper movement Very good. Very forward. Good. Yeah. And it's just a matter of our intention. You know, there is almost like this one last question that I've asked clients over the years, I'm going to say it because it really has helped people. And the question is, if there was a miracle tonight in your dream, and in that dream, that problem or that issue that you have was completely resolved, mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. So that miracle gave you the answer you've been searching for and searching for and searching for, right. and you wake up tomorrow and the problem is different or changed or gone, how would you experience it? How would you relate to it without saying a word to yourself or anybody else? Well, I, don't, I mean, I would just, I say, without saying a word, I mean, I would just express gratitude. I, I would just be so thankful. Right. You know, I just would go right. with it. And so you would feel it. Mm. Oh, you yeah. feel the difference. Right. But you wouldn't have to say anything because you would know. Right. You That's would, right. Because you would know it. Oh yeah, you don't have to say the words. Yeah. Mentally, I express yeah. gratitude all the time. Yeah. But is, isn't that just a lovely thought, Josie? That in your dream you had this miracle, and tomorrow, and, and you know it's so lovely because you know I, I'm not poo pooing the, the mind, but the mind is also this miraculous thing where you just you give somebody or yourself this idea that I can change like that. It can be different just like that. It doesn't have to take suffering. It doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to work anything out. It's just better, and you don't know why. Mm. I'm so used to trying to figure things out. Yeah, you've got to give that up. I'm... <laughs> you've got to give that up, Josie. I'm the king I, of trying to work it out. I interview God. You know? <laughs> yeah. I ask questions and questions and questions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I feel selfish for doing it. Okay. But, you know, I've learned I'm an interviewer. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Even, you yeah, know, absolutely. with the, the infinite. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Well, along that line right now, I, I have. Uh, inquiring mind is wanting to know how can somebody get in touch with you? I mean, is there a way that people can? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how, yeah. Could we, how can we do yep. that? So I have a phone number and email, so either one is fine. Do you yes. show them after the show or do oh, you want to? No, wanna... no, you can, okay. you can voice it right now. Yeah, yep, and so my, my email is hypvogel, as my last name, at hotmail.com and my phone number is 401 662-0602. And uh, give me a call. I'd love to, love to help you out. Okay, that's great. That's great. It's going to be a while before this actual...
program is going to be aired, but early I mean, um, January. Yes, and so perfect. Yeah, yeah. perfect timing. Right. Yeah. And and um, this is also showed throughout the state, so you should be able to uh, be receptive to getting some tapes for yourself. I, I love it. I've thoroughly enjoyed. We're on YouTube. Yeah, I, I've seen I know the show you've there. Yeah. you've seen us. Mm -hmm. I have. I've seen you. I love the show. I love you guys. Right. Thank you so much. Yes.